Hi, Greg Hughes here from 90 Second Website Builder. Let's talk about the form tools so that you can learn how to create a mechanism on your website that allows your visitors to submit information to you. That's called a form when you do that. And of course, forms can be as simple or as complex as you can imagine. And the way you get that information processed on your website can be done a number of ways. So in this video, I'm just going to show you one simple way to make a form. It's the most common and it's the easiest one. Now, to make a video about every possible kind of form would take a series of videos. So there will be other tutorials about more complex forms. But for this one, let me show you how to just get started with the form tools and we'll make a simple form where people can fill it out on your website and have that information submitted to you, the website owner. In 90 Second Website Builder, there's a set of tools called the form controls. And they're here, of course, in the toolbox. And we'll talk a little bit about some of these. Before we do, let me tell you that the very first tool is called the form wizard. That's basically kind of a shortcut for creating a form very quickly in case you don't want to manually make your own form. Now, to manually make your form, all of these tools are what you would use to do that. And it's easy to do, but sometimes you just quickly want to create a form. And so the form wizard comes in handy for that. So I'll show you quickly how to do that. I'm going to move the canvas like this so we have some area to work in. Let's use that form wizard really quick. I'm going to grab it and just draw a box. And a pop-up window comes up and asks me what I want to do, basically. This is what makes it a wizard. It's just kind of a step-by-step -step process. So I'm going to create a form from a template. I'll click Next. And 90 Second Website Builder has a number of pre-built templates you should know about. For example, if you just wanted to make a quick and easy form, you could just select a pre-built template and move on. What, what this does is it makes all the form fields and the labels for you. You can see kind of a thumbnail of this business contact form. It's going to be their name and address. and um, fax number or whatever, all the information that would apply to this form. So that's kind of a big form. Or you could make a simple comments form, which is just basically one text area and a way to submit that. Or a contact one. This is probably the most common form to use. A way to just simply collect a name and email and have them send that. Or here's one that's got a little more information. Now some of these are very specialized forms, but they are in fact forms. And so that's why they're part of the template. A dictionary lookup. Or a form that uses a program language called ASP, which is not as common. Most of you are going to be using PHP because you're on those kinds of servers. And of course you can edit these forms. You're not stuck with just these fields. This just gets you started. You can add more fields and labels and all that kind of stuff. This is a special form that allows your visitors to upload files to your hosting accounts. One you want to use very carefully and you want to make sure your host lets you do that. But there comes a time people want to be able to upload files. This is how you'd make a way for them to do that. If you happen to be a GoDaddy customer, GoDaddy's actually kind of particular about how you use forms on your website and they require a certain kind of form and you can't use just anything with their hosting. So we have built in a GoDaddy template. So if you are a GoDaddy customer and you want to use a form, you'll need to start with this template and then edit it from here and add or take away whatever you want. There's some other forms like a tell a friend script. If you're using software called Form Buddy, here's a template that goes with it. There's another common program called Mail My Form. This template works with that. There are some other commonly used forms like a link exchange request, RSVP forms. Even when you uh, create a search on Google Maps, that's technically a form. And so you can use this template to do that. Same thing for things like MapQuest or searches on search engines. Those are all forms. And again, they're built in as templates just to get you started. But of course, you don't have to use a template. You can uh, make one from scratch. But let's say we were doing that. And I would just would make a simple form. So I'll pick this one, click Next. And again, this is where I can add or remove some of the objects on my form. In this case, it's just an edit box with a label called Name, um, another one with a label called Email, and then the Submit button. But I can add and remove these objects here, and then go Next, and tell the software how to deal with this form basically what we want to call it, which doesn't really matter. That's just for your own sake. What the action is it's going to take, and the most common one actually is this one down here. Use the built-in PHP form processor, because what this does is this sends the data that's collected in the form your visitor provides and sends it to you. And so this is where you're going to put your email address. It's very important you put the right kind of email address in here. I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. This will send you an email, basically, of the information they filled out in the form. And so you will get this email and you can control what the subject line of that email is right here. You also control and decide what happens to the visitor after they fill out the form. That's called the success page. And you have to tell the form, you know, where do you want the people sent after they submit this information when they click the submit button. So you need to select a page on your website 
that they'll go to. So basically, your visitor fills out the form, clicks a button, they need to be taken somewhere. And that page can be a thank you page that says thank you for submitting the information. You can also have an error URL. This is optional, but if you want a page that they're taken to in case they fill the form out incorrectly. So if you had, say, a complicated form that had some required fields, uh, you could show them an error page that says, oops, you need to go back and try it again. So here's where you do all that. You click Next and Finish, and there, the form is done. So that would be one way, one very simple way to create your form. But before we do that, let me talk to you about some of those decisions we made about the email address and the success page. Let me show you how all that works. Of course, as you saw, I just used the wizard to make this form. And I can edit this form to be smaller or larger. This gray area here, I can edit by clicking on it and changing the style of it. So again, I'm not stuck with what the template gave me. But let me talk to you a little bit about making a form from scratch. It's not that hard, and it would help us understand uh, why we're doing what we're doing. So I'm going to delete this one that we made with the wizard, go back to the tools. Let's manually make a form really quick, and you'll see how it works. All forms have to start with a form area. You just saw that the wizard gave us sort of this gray box. There's a very important reason for that. All of the form objects, in order to be part of the form, need to be contained in this box. So this box needs to be large enough to hold the objects you're going to put in it. But any object that's outside of this box will not be included in the form. So you build your form inside the form area. So we take things like edit boxes. This would be the field where I would have somebody input data. So for example, maybe I'd ask for their name. This is where it would be placed. And I could get another edit box, and this is maybe where I would want them to give me their email address. And that's what that would be. I would want to label these so people know what to put in here. So I would get the text tool, which is not a form control. It's just a regular old text tool right here. And we could just drag that out here, fill it out. That might be something that maybe I'd bump up against it here. Because I'm manually making the form, I can drag and drop, move things around. Since I'm manually making my form, I need to think about how I want all of this stuff to look. So I would put another label here called email or whatever. For the sake of time, I won't do that right now. The other thing I have to have on my form, or else it won't work, is at least one button called the submit button. It's one of the form controls. So let me go back down to the form controls and grab a button, drag it out here and double click on it so that I can change the name of it. I could leave it submit, but I kind of like to change it to send. It's still a submit button, but I want to call it send. And so now when people fill out the form and click send, that actually processes the form. Now, here's the most important part of the form. You have to tell the software how you want the form processed. So I'm going to show you how that's done the most common way. Now, again, there are a lot of different ways to do this. There are some advanced things in here we're not going to go into. We'll save that for other videos. I'm going to show you the simplest ones. Watch this. I'm going to double click on the form area. Notice that I'm double clicking on the form area because this is what handles all of the processing of the form. So I double click. This is where, by the way, I could style that if I wanted to, if I didn't want that gray box. I could go here and change the colors and the shading and background, all that kind of stuff. What we're doing here is we're telling the software how to handle this form. And here's the most common thing you're going to do. You're going to click this box because in most cases, I'll even say probably 9 out of 10, you're going to want to use this because it's very simple. What this does is this tells the software, collect this information. When the user clicks send, use my server's built-in PHP form processor to send that information to my email address. And by my email address, I mean you, the website owner. This email address can't just be any email. It can't be your Yahoo account. This needs to be an email address that you've set up on the same domain that this form is on. So in other words, in my case, I'm building this form on a website called 247webtalk.com. That means my email address has to be something at 247webtalk.com. This is very important because what's happening behind the scenes is your server is basically taking the information that the end user is filling in the form and collecting it and moving it to another part of your server from your website to your email address. It's kind of an illusion. It doesn't really send it out over the internet. It really just collects the information and puts it in the form of an email and sends it to you. So you want to make sure you've set up an email at this address, same address you're building your website on, and use that one. Now, if you would like to get your email at your Gmail account or whatever, then that's something you can forward. You'd go into your hosting account cPanel and you would set up, you know, the same place you set up this email address, and you could set up a forward so that it goes to some outside 
address. But you do that at your host. You don't do that here. It's very important that the email address domain matches the domain we're on. Okay, just want to make that really clear because it's a common mistake. This is an email that you are going to get. Your website visitor comes, they fill out the form, they click send, you're going to get an email. And so that email is going to arrive in your inbox. And so what it says in the subject line here is up to you. You're the one that's going to see this. Then and this is also important and this is not optional. You need to make a decision about this. The success page or the thank you page is the page the person goes to after they fill out your form because obviously something needs to happen when they click that send button. See, from the end user standpoint, only two things happen. One, they fill out a form and click a button. And then two, they land somewhere. Well, you have to decide where they're gonna land. So what you would have done is set up a thank you page, for example, that says, thank you for submitting your information, we'll get back to you as soon as possible, or whatever you wanna say to somebody after they have filled out your form. So a form always needs two different web pages: the page that it lives on, and the page that people are gonna be taken to after they fill out the form. So in my case, I created a page called Thanks. It's part of my website already, so I'm gonna select that, click here. So I just told the software, after they fill out the form, send that to me at this email address, then take the user to this page, and we're done. That's basically all there is to it. If I click OK, we're pretty much ready to go. Now, one more very important detail about this form. This is a PHP form. That means it has to live on a page that's in PHP. So as you're working with forms, this is a very important thing to remember. If you're going to put a PHP form on your page, your page has to be what's called a PHP page. And here's how you do that. It's really simple to do. I'm going to go up to the page menu, go to the page properties, and I need to make sure that my file extension here is PHP. Now mine is because I changed it earlier. Yours probably will not be because the default is HTML. So technically, the real name of this page is index.php, and that's important for any page where you're gonna use a, a PHP object like a form. So let me recap. Probably sounded more complicated than it was, but basically what we did was we made a form area, we put in the objects that we want in the form, the fields, the labels, all the stuff we want people to be able to fill out. We put a send button, then we double clicked on that form area, and we told the software, use PHP, which email address to send this data to, my address, what I want that subject line to say, and where I want my user to go after they've clicked send. And that's pretty much it. That's how you make a simple form. If I want to, I can make an error page. If my form is complicated and people are gonna make a mistake, I can make a page where they'd go to if they fill the form out incorrectly. So you can do that if you want. There's also some other, like I said, advanced things you can do I won't go into here. We're going to use uh, other video tutorials to explain hidden fields and some of the other things like other places you could send this data. You don't have to send it to yourself in the form of an email. That's just the most common thing to do. You can actually send it to a database. You can send it to a file that gets uploaded. There's a lot of other things you can do, but again, we'll save that for other video tutorials. So if you're just making a simple form, that's one way to do it. Now you'll notice I'm going to actually delete this again and show you when we made the form wizard, we just basically made those same decisions a different way because what happened was we just drew a form area. When we created our template and I chose this, see I'll choose this one, I said next, there are the objects that are going to appear on the form. Click next. Here's where I decided to use that PHP form processor. Again, here's where I would put my domain address, 247webtalk.com in my, my case. Here's where I decide the success page. See, it's basically the same decision. It just looks a little bit different. And then I would click Next. Let me fix this so it, I don't confuse you. This is actually so important, I'll actually do it. Even for the demo, I'll do this just to remind you how important that is. I'm going to click Next, and actually, I'm done. Here is my form, and of course, I can change the look of this and the color of this. Let's check on it. Double-click on it. And you can see it did everything that we asked. It checked this box. There's the address. There's the thank you page. The form wizard is actually a good way to do it. You just want to make sure you make those right decisions. And mainly those right decisions are your email address, your thank you page, and making sure the page is saved as a PHP. So hopefully that wasn't too much information in one short video, but that's a good way to get started making forms. By the way, my thank you page, let me double click on it so you can see what I did. I simply made a page that says, thanks for submitting your information. I would probably have a lot more information here, depending on you know the reason they're filling out that form, that would go here on my thank you page. So I'm hoping that helps you get started with forms. Again, there's a lot more you can do with forms I'll cover in another video, but for now, that's the way you make a simple form with this great software called 90 Second Website Builder.